excited to have my next guest here for Rooftop Conversations. This amazing actor, I know you've seen him in so many different projects, and we're so grateful and so honored to have him. Please welcome Walter Fauntleroy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for having me. I really awesome. You. Thank you so much for being here. You. you know, we're kind of just talking off camera about just about your journey. And can I just first say, you know, you, you've you been in Grey's Anatomy, you've been in Issa Rae's Insecure, yes, yes, um, yes. Young and the Restless. Yes. Like, <laughs> you, you definitely have built such an amazing resume for Thank yourself. You. Um, and we were just talking, you've been doing this for a while now. At least 25 years now, yeah. So what was it like when you, your first major role, what was your first major role and what was that moment like for you? I would say my first major role was in theater, right? And this piece took us all around the world. We did it in, and we did it in Geneva, Switzerland. It was called Blind Lemon Blues. A wonderful uh, friend and mentor of mine, Akeem Babatunde, is the brother of Oba Babatunde, uh, known uh, for uh, Dorothy Dandridge, the original Dream Girls on Broadway. Some of my mentors growing up. Mm -hmm. we, Akeem and I became very good friends in, in, in partnership as we worked together. He became a very good mentor and a father figure for me in the theater. Wow. So we had to travel the world doing this show. When I first saw this show, I was used to doing kind of like the black chit, urban chitlin circuit theater. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting up there having a good time. And I remember seeing a piece that they were doing at this theater called the Water Tower Theater in Addison, Texas. And I saw it on tape and it reminded me of something off of Broadway. It reminded me of something that I think of when I dream about like the Harlem Renaissance or the Negro Ensemble Theater or no. Trinity Rep. Some of the stories I heard about these theaters from, from times past, you know, and I understood I'm standing on the shoulders of a lot of great people that came before me. And it just made me dream. And I was just like, if I could just live that life, not a life in, in film and in television, but like I realized there were people like me that were just living their life like this every day. And I was a network administrator making all this money. But I was like, if I could have that life, that's living. And that would be an example that I could set for my kids. And just do what you love. Now, currently, you know, let's talk about your, you know, currently in the Oval, Tyler Perry's the Oval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's so amazing. What was that experience for you, like, going into that? It was a test that led to a testimony. I'm oh, sure wow. Tyler Perry, it. from I the very it. beginning, love had it. in mind, let me see what this guy's made of. Got to test the stock because of the things that I think maybe he had planned for me or what God is showing him. Because from the very beginning, Tyler brought me in. I, I came in on an open call audition for the Madea Farewell Tour. Immediately after, I booked that right away, which I was shot. Immediately afterwards, they brought me right back for an audition for A Fall From Grace to play Malcolm. I booked that. We ended up shooting that before we did the play. And then we were 11 days in the rehearsal and then on the road for Madea Farewell Tour. Now, mind you, I respect Tyler Perry. I've always wanted to work with him in films and stuff like that, but I didn't know, I wasn't familiar with the Madea Farewell Tour, for the plays and a lot of those things. More of a serious movies that he's done, Daddy's Girls and stuff like that. But I didn't really follow the plays, so to speak, right. or a lot of his early success. And so when we got to doing the play, I didn't know much about the relationship with the characters. But my wife, who was very, you know, integral in helping me to uh, understand that process, really helped me to find balance in that, in that kind of a, world that I wasn't really familiar with. But from the very beginning, he told me what he was going to do. He was going to take me from this and the Oval and all that kind of stuff. And it was, you know, le learning lessons along the way. But I think going on the tour, getting familiar with him, knowing how he works, getting familiar with Mark Whitney and his team, I think that really helped me to familiarize myself with the way they work in the process. And it just made it kind of seamless when we got started. Really? Yeah. So what does he like to work with? He's very concentrated, but we work very fast. He's not so meticulous in terms of like the work. Okay. <laughs> so as an actor, you have to take care of yourself. But being a theater actor, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've always, you know, done that um, right. the way I was taught. And uh, I just look at our rehearsals, not even really rehearsals, but our shoots, like as the uh, a, a tech in theater. We have long days, but it just goes beat to beat, and, but he just goes fast. And so I try to come in as prepared as I can before we do the scene, because typically we only get one shot. Wow. Yeah, we typically get one shot and move on. He'll say, hey, Walter, you need more time? I was like, yeah, Todd, can I get more? Because he can tell him, like, oh, when well, <laughs> it's, it's just like, okay, uh, oh, wow. okay, uh, I'll give you a minute. Then he'll go, literally go around the corner and sit down and it's action. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're in the scene. That was literally a minute. Right. <laughs> Not even a minute. It's literally like 10 seconds. seconds. 10 wow. seconds. Wow. And then, it's, but then when you see it, it's like, oh, my God. I was so freaked out that day and somehow it looked perfect. 
we don't know. So I think part of the process is he's teaching us to trust. Let go and just trust. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is Donna Jones with Rooftop Conversations.